Hello everyone, uh, I'll be talking about Apache Airflow today. Uh, who of you know what Apache Airflow is? Pretty much everyone, I'm quite surprised. Who of you uses Apache Airflow? That's fantastic. It's like, for me, it's a fantastic uh, place to, to be to talk about Apache Airflow. Um, and I'll tell you why. Uh, very quickly, you know all about, so Apache Airflow is an orchestrator that orchestrates different uh, uh, workflows, dynamic workflows. It's dynamic, it's Python, it's extensible, it's scalable, so like all the good things, but you know everything because you know and use Airflow, so I won't uh, talk a lot about this. What I'll be talking about, I'll tell you about uh, how we work with Airflow, the Poly Polydia team. I'm, I'm from Polydia, I'm from Polydia company, so uh, we have a whole team working on Airflow. Uh, what the Airflow is about, uh, I'll tell you what advantages are of uh, Airflow are comparing to other similar solutions, where we are now in Apache Airflow 1.10, 1 and what's coming in Apache Airflow 2.0. Everyone is waiting for that, so I'll just uh, go fast. Uh, so I'm Jarek Potjuk. I'm a principal software engineer at Polydia. Uh, I'm also Apache Airflow committer and Apache Airflow PMC member. So I'm just very closely in the, the team which develops Airflow itself, which is an open source project. project. I'm also certified GCP architect and a lot of access ex-Googler, ex-CTO in my own company, ex choir member. Yeah, I chose to come back to the engineering career after being CTO in my own company. That's actually a choice that I advise you to make uh, at some point of time. It's very good. Uh, team, so we have quite a big team working on uh, on Apache Airflow. Uh, for now, it's six people altogether. We had in the past we had three more members. We are changing quite frequently, um, uh, and we also have another team. Uh, and I put all the names there because uh, those people are actually the, the community and people uh, working on the product are important. So we also have another team which works on Apache Airflow, this time about developing new Apache Airflow website, uh, which was also developed in Polydia. Uh, and I will show results of the work of the team as well at the end. So a few words about my company, not too, not too long, because we don't have a lot of time. Uh, we have 70 people here in Warsaw. Uh, we are very strongly engineering driven, but we also have UX and design uh, department. Uh, we traditionally developed mobile application software, so mobile applications and, and backend for those applications. But for more than two years, we grew from zero to like 15, maybe 18 people. The part that is working on open source software and, and cloud, and actually it's uh, it's a new model that is very surprisingly that's very surprisingly works very well. We get paid for contributing to open source by our customers. So this is a fantastic place to be. Uh, so Polydia and Apache Airflow. We started in August 2018, so more than a year ago, uh, with two people, myself and, and a colleague of mine. And uh, now December, we are at December 2019. We have six people and nine people worked uh, on the team over the time. During the time, this is something that our customer wanted us to do. We developed 130 operators. Operator is the, the part that connects uh, Airflow to external service. Uh, we developed uh, those operators for 18 Google Cloud Platform services. This was our main focus and our customer wanted us to do that. We developed a converter from Uzi to Airflow. Do you know Uzi? Who knows Uzi? Quite a lot of people. So. Uh, Uzi is a legacy, I would say, Hadoop uh, workflow management tool, and we developed uh, a tool to automatically convert Uzi to Airflow. I will not talk about this, but uh, a lot of people find it very interesting. We, I, we can talk later about this uh, after, at the after party or tomorrow. Uh, uh, the idea behind Uzi to Airflow was is that the world is better place one XML at a time, yeah? uh, one XML less at a time. So Uzi to Airflow is reflecting that. Uh, and we developed also a new Apache Airflow website, which I will show later. However, that's not all, because the, our customer is so generous and so happy for us to work in the open source software that they generally told us, you have a freedom to do whatever you want to make the Apache Airflow better and contribute to it. So we took our time to make, our, make ourselves much more productive in developing whatever customer wanted. And in the time we had, we also developed a lot of things which, are, which were just for the community, for, the, uh, for everyone who uses Airflow. So we've done a lot of documentation improvements. We restructured the whole documentation for Airflow. Uh, I developed, and together with my friends, uh, a breeze. 
you know, it's a breeze to develop airflow. You see the, the, the pan, yeah? So uh, it, it, uh, it's impro improved development environment, and I had a completely whole 45 minute talk just about this, uh, and I did it six times already. So it's, it's my beloved child. We helped to migrate to Python 3, so new Airflow to zero is uh, Python 3 only. Everyone claps, yeah, everyone, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we have uh, three weeks to go, so uh, to, to, to Python 2 to end of life. Uh, we've implemented PyLint, we are continuing implementing PyLint compatibility. We, we have a lot of PyLint um, compliance and testing the, the quality of our code. We've introduced pre-commit framework, uh, and I also had a talk about this one for like 20, 30 minutes. Uh, uh, I can talk about that because that's a fantastic thing, uh, and you should, if you don't use pre-commit framework, uh, which is called precommit.com, then you should now. Uh, then we have re-implemented re the whole environment for CI, for continuous integration, and we are continuing working on that and making it better. And we also, that's, that's also one of the things, so uh, we had a lot of time to develop this because we developed, since we had to develop all those 130 operators, we didn't want to develop them by hand, or we did uh, initially, but we realized how repetitive task it is. So we developed a tool to generate those operators automatically, and that's why we had a lot of time to implement uh, a lot of other stuff. So we just improved our productivity 10 times by just generating the code. It's an open source project. You can actually use it to generate your own operators if you want. I can talk about that later as well. No time today to talk about everything we've done. Uh, and last but not least, we just last week switched uh, tests from nose test to pi tests, and that's fantastic thing. Use pi test, not nose test or not standard unit test, whatever. Pi test is so great. As a result, uh, we not only developed what we developed, but we also have two Apache Airflow committers. I'm one, and uh, Camille uh, is another one. Uh, more committers to come from our team. Uh, I'm sure it will happen uh, shortly. Uh, and I also was invited to become a PMC member. Uh, PMC Project Management Committee, for those who do not know Apache, this is kind of overlooking board of, of the project, and our role is to make sure that the project is, is, is done uh, using Apache or following Apache way. So vendor neutral and stuff like that. So making sure that we are doing the good thing according to Apache way. Uh, final word about our company. We are super open source and community friendly. Uh, we also have an Apache Beam team working. So we have more than 15 people working on open source software exclusively uh, and getting paid for that, which is fantastic. Uh, so we run Apache Beam Meetup. We already had first edition and more to come. We run Warsaw Airflow Meetup as well. Uh, uh, we had one meetup. And tomorrow, and I'll, I will tell about that at the end of the talk, we also have a workshop for first time Apache Airflow contributors um, run in our company. Uh, this is a, an event which is accompanying PyData Warsaw. Uh, the, and uh, we also in the past, uh, had our own conference, uh, MC, five years, bigger, the same size or bigger than this one, five years from 200, 300 people to 600 people. I was the main organizer there. Uh, that was uh, an experience which I won't uh, forget, and I have, at this time I have to thank uh, Rafał and all the other organizers of, uh, of PyData also, because they, they are doing a fantastic job. Uh, uh, it's a like, great place to be here. It's like super cool, and cool that they agreed for us with, to, 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 to connect this workshop, because they announced the workshop. We announced the PyData also on our meetup uh, group, and I think this collaboration is great. Now, going back to the main topic. Mm. So why choose Apache Airflow over any of the others, other, other um, workflow management tools that you can have? Yes, yeah, so we have all this Luigi, Uzi, Kubeflow, uh, Nextflow, Argo, Prefect, whatever, lots of them. But Airflow is uh, standing out, and I will tell why. So first of all, Airflow is not a processing engine. Air, Airflow is, a, is an orchestrator. Airflow do not do any, doesn't do anything. Uh, like almost anything, it just tells others what to do. This is like this is how you should think about Airflow. So, just tell others what to do, uh, and does it, and to do it in synchronous way. So it's exactly as a conductor in or, in an orchestra uh, or in a choir. I'm actually an ex choirist, as you maybe saw. I, I sang 30 years in a choir, so I know exactly that uh, when we 
perform, uh, the conductor is not needed uh, unless something wrong happens. And that's exactly what airflow is. So uh, the, the, uh, con the airflow is monitoring what's going on. Uh, and whenever there is anything, it might intervene. It might restart a failing job or might, might give the information to the operator that it needs to be restarted. And mostly it's, it's uh, almost idle or fairly idle, but it doesn't touch the data. Like I, in ideal world, all the operators are not touching the data. They are just telling others what to do. What is super cool, and that's why we are up Pi data conference, so the Pi part of it, uh, Airflow is all Python. Not only written in Python, but you also develop your workflow, workflows in Python. So the same people who can write the operators, the same people who can do the data science stuff and know Python, they can also develop the, the workflows. And this is actually a super big strength. And every time we hear from others, I would like to write an XML or YAML description of the workflow, we say, no, this is exactly not what Airflow is doing. Airflow is using Python as the source of truth and helps, uh, this makes a data scientist or anyone who, is in, uh, who knows a little bit of Py Python the power to do the workflows on, the, on their own because it's super boring to write XML and it's quite cool to write Python. So that's, that's actually what Airflow does. And what Airflow does as well, uh, it allows you to write this kind of workflows, yeah? I mean, imagine writing this kind of workflow in XML or YAML or whatever. I mean, no, yeah. forget. However, in Airflow, you can develop this kind of workflows in like 100 lines of code, pretty much, or maybe 200. But it's, it's a code. It's a code that you can test. You can test automatically. You can you know, debug the code while the, the workflow is the, 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 the generated. That's, why, that's, that's the power of Airflow. Like, If you have really complex workflows, Airflow is your friend. Oh, Airflow has a U UI. Uh, maybe the UI is not like the best or nicest or kind of modern. I wouldn't say it's modern, uh, but it works. I mean, we know that. I'll tell you from where we know that. But but the, the 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 UI is quite great because you can monitor and check what's going on with your workflows in production. In, even if you have hundreds or, or thousands of them. You have a UI and you can see and rerun the task, uh, check the logs, etc., etc. see the status from the UI, and so that's cool. What's even cooler, uh, Airflow has also CLI, so you can do a lot of stuff by just interfacing with it via CLI, so making commands, making, uh, finding tasks, listing tasks, etc. So this is also good for, uh, for developers who do not like to look at the uh, web UI, they have a CLI. So where Airflow shines, Airflow shines uh, with the regular batch jobs. So it's not a streaming solution. That's the important thing. Like lots of people are trying to use Airflow for streaming. Airflow is not good at streaming. It's good at regular batch ETL jobs, which are processed in fixed intervals of data, managing complex dependencies, as you saw there. It allows for backfilling data. This is actually one of the most important features of Airflow. If you want to reprocess part of your data because something changed, either the data or you fix the code that processes the data, you can rerun any portion of the data for, from the past, from the point that you need to rerun, and Airflow will just do it without you know, yourself knowing exactly what are dependencies. It will figure out what to do, and you can rerun historical data uh, processing. And that's, that's super cool. And you can interface to literally hundreds of different systems. So we have, there are hundreds of operators in Airflow. Uh, and surprisingly, what we found out during such meetups and conferences that people are uh, using Airflow in, a, in some strange ways. So a, lot of, or a number of people are actually using Airflow to, like they, they use their own system to generate DAGs, generate Python code, which they run through Airflow. It's kind of strange because you're supposed to write the Python code yourself, but there are some very good uses where the Python code might be generated. And it turns out that it's much easier to generate such a Python code than XML files in many, in, in many circumstances. I, can, I see some faces which are surprised. <laughs> yes, I was surprised too, but it works and it makes sense. Uh, I, I can tell you that. Uh, actually, Uzuti Airflow do, is doing exactly this. Mm -hmm. It's taking XML files and generates Python code. And this Python is fully readable, like, like if human wrote it. And it, it was super easy, actually. So, uh, coming back a little, state of the pinwheel. You know, pinwheel is the thing here, if, in case you didn't know, so the, the, the spinning stuff. 
So we have uh, several 1.10 on on versions or from 1.10 to the 1.10.6 uh, and we have 1.10.7 in the making. Actually at the conference uh, today I just pushed the last change to make the uh, Travis green uh, for 1.10.7. So keep, keep finger crossed, crossed, next few days uh, it might be released. Uh, it, was, it is actually, actually deployed in thousands of companies. Uh, and lots of big companies are using Airflow, and Airflow is actually using, um, I mean, I think it's one of the most popular, especially in Python world, uh, most popular solution for, for this kind of workflows. It's on the rise of usage. I mean, we see that, we hear that, we have some statistics that show us like many, many more people are using Airflow every day. Uh, and we have 2.0 version which we work on in master. It's not stable, it fails from time to time, it is not backwards compatible, not fully backwards compatible. There are some incompa incompatibilities with, with which we document very thoroughly what kind of changes you have to do to, to, to migrate. But we are deeply into 2.0 development and that's, that's what I'm talking about mainly as a result. Uh, you see this Apache feather. I'm a big fan of Apache Software Foundation. I've been to the conference, Apache Con conference, uh, uh, a month ago, and I've learned how fantastic organization it is. Apache Airflow is an Apache project, and it has an Apache stamp of approval because it's a top-level project, which means that it is run according to the Apache way. And this is something that makes it much better. This is one reason why you want to use projects like Apache Airflow over some other even open source projects, because you know that it's following certain rules, and I'll talk about how we can, like we know that it's popular, a lot of people are using it. We know that, uh, that uh, there are some changes coming and we have to be prepared from, from that. So we figure out right now, we think and talk in the PMC and between committers, how to stay relevant. Because uh, it's easy to fall into the trap, okay, we are the most user used uh, workflow system in the world, people will use, it, uh, use us anyway. No, we have to think what's coming and we have to be prepared for that. So cloud native is coming. I think I, I don't have to explain Kubernetes and all the ways of uh, running your deployments is, uh, is something that is super important. Uh, APIs are backbone of modern software. So we, we, you really want to be, give your customers the capability of interfacing with your product using some well-defined, easy to use APIs. For now we have UI, we have the CLI, we have some experimental API, but it's not very good, it doesn't let you do everything you would like to. User interface mat matters, yeah? So we would like to, to have a little bit fresher user interface. It doesn't look appealing if you use it, and I'm a big fan of, of using nice interfaces. For example, the main reason why I'm, I prefer GCP over AWS, not the main, but one of the reasons, uh, is that the UI there is modern, like actually, it's, it's nice. It's nice to use it in console. So we want to do the same. Uh, performance and reliability are super important for many people, of course, because you want to use your computing power uh, efficiently. Uh, there are many services that are coming, many services that uh, you, we don't know even right now, or many services are changing very fast, and we want to be able to interface with all those services. And one last but not least, uh, 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 this is an Apache project, yeah? So Apache Airflow is all about community. Apache uh, motto, which we've, I've learned at the Apache Con is like community over code. So the important thing is like you build great community of people and as a result, great code comes after. It's not the other way around. And actually uh, Apache Airflow is, has a great community, fantastic people, uh, it's super fun to work with them, super challenging at the time. Uh, but we have to, have to also take care about the community and not only about community of developers or of contributors to the code, but also about the community of users for many reasons. One reason is like, they are our users. We love our users, we want them to be happy. But secondly, our users, we want our users to become contributors as well. So we've learned that a lot of people are developing stuff, uh, extending operators, developing their own things, and we want them to contribute back. And this is like, uh, this is really what we would love to do, and that's what we are doing. So, we are super lucky today because this is the first time anybody outside of the very close group of people sees the result of survey, survey that we just finished. Uh, so we ran for uh, 
My friend, my colleague from my company, Thomas Urbasek, started it two weeks ago, more than two weeks ago. It ran for the last two weeks. It's fresh off the press. We haven't yet published the results. You will see some of that. Uh, we found some, some surprises. Uh, and we've learned that we are generally going in the right direction. Uh, we have to change and adapt a little bit what we planned for 2.0, but generally we were thinking right, and that's good. So a few general numbers. Uh, how often do you use Airflow? Uh, so most of the people are using Airflow daily or weekly. It's super, so if you use Airflow, you use it all the time, and that becomes your daily tool to use. Uh, what do you use Airflow for? A lot has been said about different machine learning frameworks today. Dataflow is more targeted for the traditional ETL processing, but it's still useful in many cases for machine learning uh, pipelines. So 30% of people are using it for machine learning. Uh, almost everyone uses it for data processing. Some people are using it for automating DevOps, so it's kind of um, CI equivalent. Yes, you can use Airflow for that. It's not intended, but yeah, you, you can do it. Uh, what can be improved? Performance, scheduler performance, web UI. Yeah, people would like to have it nicer. Logging, alerting. Surprisingly, uh, well, it's not wasn't, wasn't a surprise, but we've learned how many people want to have better documentation, better onboarding, better technical documentation, better examples, how to. Yeah, that's what you would expect from a good product. Better reliability, impor important. The rest API. Yeah, 30% people want to have, and authentication authorization. These are the top things that uh, people would like to get improved. And these are the things that people would like to be implemented new. Production-ready Docker image. Declarative way of writing DAGs. Well, that's something that we don't really feel is good, because that's not what Airflow is, but still 50% people would like to. So we provide converters like Uzi to Airflow, and we also have a talk with uh, Common Workflow Language uh, Framework, which produces kind of declarative uh, standard for declaring workflows, and they've, they've written their own converter to Airflow. So maybe we don't have to do it in Airflow, but maybe we can uh, just expose information how you can write uh, declarative DAGs and convert them into Python. Horizontal autoscaling, yeah, important. Uh, examples, how to onboarding documentation, again, appearing here. Asynchronous operator, stateless web server. Our web server is stateful. It can take five minutes to load in some installations. That's not good to start. Uh, so we want to have it more stateless. Uh, Knative executor, that's an important thing. I will talk about this a little bit. And I don't know who, but some people said that they have everything they need. That's fairly surprised. I've never felt that using any software that I have everything that I need, but apparently some people do. So how do we address that in Airflow 2.0? This is the, finally the, 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 the clue of the, of the talk. So cloud native is coming. So more details about from our, from our survey. So we, we have different kinds of executors in Airflow. So we can execute it either locally on your lo local machine or in a cluster, Kubernetes cluster, or in Celery uh, cluster. Uh, still, a lot of people are using Celery cluster. They, some of them use like, Kubernetes, uh, and some people use all of them. Uh, a lot of people are still using Airflow as a local executor, which means that everything, all the orchestration in happens on one machine. Because if you have a small load, that's perfectly enough. And that's okay, this is also, local executor is also a production ready executor. However, more interesting thing is like, we asked specifically about, about Kubernetes, because this is the cloud native we were talking about. So 30% of people, the, the highest voted answer was that they do not plan to use Kubernetes near term. That was a bit surprised for us because we kind of living in a bubble that everyone is moving to Kubernetes. Apparently not. So uh, maybe this doesn't look good for Kubernetes, but you can see that there are some answers which, uh, which we broke down about like whether they use or they will use or they can use Kubernetes. So if you summarize it a little bit differently, you will see that either use or can use Kubernetes in the foreseeable future. It's like 70% people can or will use it uh, with Kubernetes or can use Kubernetes, which means that Kubernetes is important, but it also means that we shouldn't abandon the celery approach, which is uh, non-Kubernetes uh, native. So what we do, we thought and we've implemented almost, uh, like we've implemented the proof of concept for Knative executor, which is, uh, you know, Knative, uh, kind of cloud run Lambda functions, AWS. Uh, and we found out that it doesn't work. Like 
we it, it has too many limitations for so basically work work uh, workers of Apache Airflow are not as stateless as, as Knative Native would like it to be. So we abandoned that idea, and we actually had a special interest group between the committers, uh, which was called Special Interest Group Knative, and we just renamed it to Special Interest Group Scalability because we abandoned Knative in this. Instead, we are working on something called Native Airflow Executor. So again, Tomek, my, my friend, uh, colleague from, from Polydia, he made a proof of concept, and we will do a Native Executor which uses PubSub type of communication. Think Kafka, think PubSub, think uh, well, there are other, other implementation, Redis. Um, it's horizontally auto-scalable, uh, yeah, and that's it. And we are working on this, so we will go more cloud native, you will be able to deploy it at different providers, so AWS, uh, Google Cloud, whatever. You can use it either as a service if somebody opens it up, like currently Astronomer and uh, a Composer from Google, they are two biggest services of our, uh, which are serving Apache Airflow as a service. So we still want to help those guys to be able to provide it as a service. We use generic pops up uh, architecture for communication, which is more kind of cloud way of doing things, cloud native. There is no database communication between, between components, so something that we are removing from the current setup. And we are using, uh, we are working on production optimized Docker e image. This is my kind of beloved chart. I work on it for, for months now. I mean, just like five minutes here, five minutes there, among other things. But it's coming, it's soon. Monitoring, we decided we don't want to do our own kind of monitoring solution. We rather integrate with standard monitoring tools like StatsD. Uh, we just export more metrics. Uh, we work out how to integrate Prometheus and Kubernetes. Uh, uh, we use metrics in order to do horizontal scalability. So for example, we will monitor how many tasks we have in, in a queue. If more than X, then we will scale. We'll, our horizontal autoscaler will scale out, um, scale up. Out, never know. I never know, um, and and this is basically the approach for cloud native we take APIs. So we know that uh, we need modern API, and we work on one. It will be HTTP based API. So CLI and web server they will both use the same HTTP based API. Uh, between scheduler and workers, as I mentioned, we will use pop up communication rather than API. Like it, it is also an API, but it's kind of different, not HTTP based. Uh, it will be generic, so it will be not be tied to particular deployment you have, so you will be able to deploy it on both Kubernetes cluster and Celery cluster and whatever, Mesos if you still are using that or whatever. Um, better authentication authorization, which will open uh, capabilities of having multi-tenant Apache Airflow. Because right now Apache Airflow has single database uh, and it's not protected in any way. Mm, you cannot separate the data between different users if we want to make it happen because uh, service providers want it. Uh, so, uh, UI. So 97% people, almost everyone, actually use the, the UI. This is a good thing. Uh, some people use CLI, some people even use the experimental API, and small number of people created their own API. But we see that actually the UI is, is useful, and we have more details. We actually broke down which views are most useful, etc., etc. So we have all the data and we know what is important. So. One of the things which we want to implement, make UI refresh. Right now you have to refresh it to get fresh data. It's, it's 2020, it should refresh itself, yeah, finally. Uh, modern design possibly, maybe material design. Uh, use APIs for communication um, uh, with, and not DB, because right now UI actually calls DB uh, and gets the data from DB by, via SQL calls, SQL alchemy, it's not good. Better authentication authorization, stateless web server, it's already done pretty much, like we have almost stateless web server. Better responsiveness. Okay, performance and reliability. Uh, we have uh, uh, a work in progress to automate performance testing so that you will be able to test before release if you have any performance gain on losses. losses. We, we have monitoring of performance characteristic. We have improving web server, scheduler, performance project which is running on their own. We have internal instrumentation opt optimizations so that the, the users will be able to monitor their own DAGs and see where the bottlenecks are. So this is, this is something that we are planning. For many services, we currently the operators are bound to the release of Airflow. So with 1.10.2 came a set of operators. We want to change it. 
We know that migration to 2.0 will take time, so we are introducing a new approach, moving operators to completely new import path, changing import path into zero, and backporting to 1.10. So we will be able to use operators from Airflow to zero, which have many new features, and there are many more operators. You will be able to use it in any previous 1.10 version or few previous 1.10 version. Yeah, that's repeated. Uh, and for in the future, we will work on different packaging of Airflow so that you will be able to install those uh, separately. Now, community of our code. Documentation, no guide on best practices. No, documentation is not clear enough. This was highly voted uh, answers. So we got a Google Season of Docs uh, program, which we ran together with Google, which improved onboarding best practices, architecture deployment options. We have better structure. Both user and docu developer documentation was improved. Uh, and we worked together with technical writers from India and Russia to get the uh, Season of Docs working. We developed the new website, very nice, modern. This is done work sponsored by Google Cloud and done by Polydia. And we have some community over code development environment. So we have a development environment which can get you up and running as a developer in 10 minutes with great integration with IDE, well, document, well documented, and allows you to run and debug the DAGs locally. And finally, we have a fully debuggable, debuggable debug executor cooperation with another company, DataBand AI. And that's end of my talk. I have to speed up. I would like to invite you to uh, the workshop that is tomorrow at seven uh, at five thirty in our company at Polydia. Uh, in a moment, I will open up uh, ten more places because we already have a full house. Uh, but especially for PyData Warsaw, we will open up new places. If you want to learn how to contribute to open source software like Apache Airflow, we can teach you, and you can subscribe there. For now, you can be subscribe to the waitlist, but I will open in a moment uh, ten more places so that everyone who subscribes uh, can join. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.